I want to know what Martian soil feels like, but Elon's too busy on Twitter to get us there, so let's make our own. Okay, so just so we don't upset any astrophysicists, the stuff on Mars is called regolith technically, not soil, because soil means it has some organic components in it. The stuff on Mars is just, you know, completely inorganic. So back in the late 90s, NASA had their Pathfinder rover on Mars, and it had some tools on it to be able to analyze the soil, and they found it was very similar to the volcanic rocks in Hawaii, so they mined a few tons of that, crushed it up into a very fine dust, and they used that as a Martian regolith simulant to test their latest rovers by driving them on it and seeing if the uh, wheels held up and everything. They wanted it to match the mechanical properties of the Martian soil, but they weren't too worried about the chemical accuracy because they were just testing rovers. Fast forward to 2012, the Curiosity rovers on Mars, it's basically a chemistry lab on wheels. It's got much more advanced analysis tools on it, mass spectrometry, the works, and it started analyzing samples and it sent the data back to us. So now we pretty much know the exact chemical composition of Martian soil. So you'd think now that we know the composition, there'd be tons of companies making their own regolith simulant, but there's only a couple out there, mostly based in America. So when you factor in shipping to the UK, it cost me over a hundred quid to get a kilo of it. So I thought, let's just make our own. So the first thing I did was read the papers with the Curiosity data in it. And they basically said that Martian regolith is very similar to basalt on Earth. Basalt's just a very common volcanic rock that's high in silica. So I started searching for some basalt online and found that some companies actually sell it crushed up as volcanic rock dust for fertilizing gardens and stuff. So eventually I found a company in Cornwall selling it and they actually had a full mass spectrometry breakdown of their rock dust and it was a pretty close match. It was the closest I could find. Problem was, they only sold 20 kilogram bags, which was way more than I need, but I bought one anyway. So I made a spreadsheet and I started tweaking the ratios to get it as close to Mars as possible. It took a little while because when you increase the ratio of one component, it reduces all of the others. So it was kind of juggling with all of them to get it to match up properly, but we got it to 95%. So now everything's arrived, it's time to suit up and get started. First of all, I sift the rock dust to remove any particles larger than one millimeter because Martian regolith is quite fine. I took 100 grams of the sift dust and started adding the extra components. First, I added some silicon dioxide, which was just some pure white sand I found. Then I added a load of red iron oxide, which gives Mars its distinctive red color. and also some black iron oxide, calcium carbonate, calcium sulfate, and magnesium oxide. So then I mixed it up thoroughly, and this is what it ended up looking like. And here it is compared to the original basalt dust. And yeah, it's pretty cool to hold. It's probably the closest I'm going to get to feeling what Martian soil is like. But I did learn that it is best to wear gloves when holding it because the iron oxide will stay in your fingers orange. So that's going to be fun for any future Mars colonists. They're going to have to take a lot of washing powder to remove all those stains from their white astronaut suits. And at this point, I should mention that there is one component that I didn't include in my simulant that takes up about 0.5% of Martian soil by weight, and that's perchlorates. There are a group of chemicals like potassium perchlorate, sodium perchlorate, calcium perchlorate, they're all on Mars, but the important part is the perchlorate. So these salts are very toxic, and if you were to grow any crops in soil containing that sort of level of perchlorates, the plants would absorb the crops, concentrate them, and those plants would be completely inedible for humans, very toxic. So basically, any future Mars colonists would have to remove these perchlorates before they could use the regolith for growing crops or anything. Luckily, the salts are water soluble, so they could maybe wash the regolith to remove the salts. But I imagine water might be quite precious up there, so they'd have to filter it out very well again. Alternatively, they might be able to use some sort of a genetically modified enzyme to break down the perchlorates, or they could use thermal decomposition. If they've got a heat source hot enough and they don't mind wasting the energy, you could heat, say, sodium perchlorate up to 500 degrees Celsius and it breaks down into 
oxygen gas and sodium chloride, both of which would be pretty useful up there. So basically you can think of my regolith simulant as a treated version that's ready for growing crops in without them being toxic. So after this first run I got a bit carried away and did a load more and ended up using about 10 kilograms of the basalt bag to make 15 kilograms of regolith, which is way more than I'm going to need. So I started packing it up into 500 gram bags and I gave a few to my friends, I sold a few on Etsy, um, but I've still got like 10 kilograms of regolith. So my plan for a future video is to grow some edible plants in it, see if that works. And I'm also thinking of trying to make some sort of concrete. I've seen, I've read a paper on that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other ideas for what I should do with this regolith. I've got way too much. 